Perfect. Thanks for making it today, everybody. We've been super pumped about what we're going to do today with, with this clinic and the clinics we've been putting on uh, last week and this week for Overwatch so far. And we're pumped to get into the Rocket League clinics here. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Coach Prescott. I'm the director of esports at Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa. Um, we'll hop right into things here for a minute. Start a clinic today. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown uh, of our program, tell you a little bit about who we are, what we do, and for you high school upperclassmen in particular, what opportunities we have available to you post high school. So we are a varsity esports program. We're officially recognized and supported by the college. We represent Northwestern in all of our competitions. Uh, we are within the athletic department, so we're on par with our other traditional sports teams like basketball, volleyball, football, things of that vein. Uh, we're in our second year as a program, so we're still building things up pretty new as far as sports teams goes, as are many of you guys, I'm sure. Um, currently, as far as what we are competing in and playing in, we compete in uh, Overwatch and Rocket League in particular, which obviously you guys are doing that right now as well. Um, we have a, a lot of openings for both of these teams. And so part of these clinics is a, a recruiting tool uh, to help you guys learn a little bit more about your games, give us an opportunity to, to meet new players, regardless of your skill and ability. Um, all players are welcome to, to apply to, oh, I can shut up my screen share. Sorry about that. Uh, all players are welcome to apply. Um, we are excited about the opportunities that we're putting together and, and offering here. Um, real quick, I'll just toss in the chat our recruitment form. If you're interested in getting in touch with me, that's the best way to, to do that. Otherwise, your coaches have my contact information as well. Um, so what do we do as part of a varsity esports program? Um, being varsity, we're mostly focused on the competitive side of things. So most of our students are competitive players, practice, compete. We travel on occasion to in-person competitions. Uh, we compete with the National Esports Collegiate Conference, the NECC. But in addition to being a competitive team, we have production, broadcasting, and other industry opportunities within esports. So these other roles are also um, things that we recruit for and offer scholarships for. As far as speaking of scholarships and things that we offer, so what do we offer? Um, scholarships, as I mentioned, community of like-minded individuals. We're here putting together a, a great program of exceptional individuals who are committed to striving towards common goals with one another. We have an esports facility on campus. Got a couple pictures earlier of, of a small snapshot into what that looks like. We have 18 PCs uh, spread across our space. We currently travel on occasion to, to land tournaments as well when those are available to us. We offer player development and coaching to our players. Um, and that's something that you'll get a taste of today. Um, kind of a small taste of how we do things at the next level. And again, with those other roles, we have industry esports or esports industry experience available. And we have academic support through our program as well. We want to make sure our students are succeeding, not just on the esports competitive field, but in the classroom as well. So as far as things that we're looking for, you know, primarily, I'm, I'm interested in motivated individuals who want to join and enhance our culture. Our three core values are excellence, ownership, and empathy. We strive in all that we do in the esports program to give an excellent effort to come up with the best processes and practice methods to be the best that we can be. But to do that in the classroom as well, and to take ownership, not just of our own success as individuals, and not even just our own success as teams, but as an entire program. And to do all that with empathy, lifting one another up, encouraging one another to strive for excellence and ownership. So that's kind of the philosophy of our program. These are the roles that we're recruiting for. Again, primarily competitive players in Overwatch and Rocket League. If you're interested, definitely get in touch and reach out to me. Um, today's clinic. So what are we going to talk about today during the clinic? A few things. Um, I'm going to talk to you about tools for practice, how to do that effectively and efficiently. Um, a lot of a lot of players and individuals and teams are used to playing video games and uh, but practice this idea of, of taking you to the next level of being competitive and having structure and how do you attain growth? We'll talk about that. Um, and then communication as well, vitally important concept in esports teams. 
And then Coach Fish is going to talk to us a little bit about some specifics of Rocket League. He has been our uh, volunteer Rocket League coach here at Northwestern this year. He was a senior uh, in our program, captained our varsity team. And then he has also now recently been hired by Wartburg College over in Waverly, Iowa uh, to launch their esports program. So they don't have a program yet. He is going to build it from the ground up. We're super excited for him. Uh, he'll probably mention that again as well when he gets going through his stuff. So for you Eastern Iowa people, uh, keep an eye out for Wartburg as well. So we will get right into things then. Uh, starting off with a effective practice. How do you practice? Um, I operate through a goal-oriented philosophy. Um, I, I believe that if you are striving to improve, you need to know what you're trying to get better at, right? You can't just sit down and open up the game and play at random. You need to set goals. So let's break this down step by step. First off, when do you need to, to make your goals? At what point does that need to happen? You need to know what you're working on before you even launch the game. So you should have a list of larger goals, you know, maybe 10, 10 things or so. The number exactly doesn't matter, but think of all the skills that your game requires, you know, mechanics, positioning, boost management, uh, rotations, ball management, passing, anything you can think of as far as, hey, what is a skill in, in Rocket League? Okay, these are all my goals, the skills I want to get better at. I need to know which one of those I'm going to be working on today. And then how many? One to two at a time max, right? When you sit down for a practice session, pick one goal, maybe two at max. You don't want to have 10 goals going at a time on your day to day because you just won't be able to focus on them all at the same time. What I would often do uh, in my own practice and what I encourage my players to do if this is helpful for them is to write their goals on a sticky note for the day and just tag it to the bottom of their monitor. That way they've got a visual in front of them, constantly reminding them as they practice what they're working on. Um, so how do you formulate good goals, goals that are valuable and helpful? Um, it's this idea of winners do, losers don't, right? Winners create goals that are actionable, things that you can do and focus on in game. Um, an example of a, of a poor goal would be, okay, don't waste boost. Well, if you're not supposed to waste boost, what are you supposed to do, right? How are you supposed to use your boost? So a better way of writing that would be like, oh, use boost in these scenarios or only use boost when trying to do this, right? Or, oh, if you're working on rotations, you know, don't use don't or forget to do this. It's always going to be things that you can actionably do, things that you can practice in game. Because if you just use don't goals, all it tells you is what not to do, but it doesn't give you a what you do need to do. Um, so individually, you should have goals. We've talked about that mostly. And then team-wise, as a team, anytime you sit down for a team practice, you know whether it's a scrimmage or even just a game, um, you should have, hey, what is our goal as a team? What are we trying to work on? Are we trying to work on our team communication, our rotations? What do we want to get out of practice today? What do we want to have accomplished? What do we want to have grown in? So I, I think having goals is vitally important for two reasons. One, it's the best way to improve to make sure you're actually experiencing growth by focusing your play. And two, it's important because you need measures of success beyond winning, especially in practice, because winning is not a controllable outcome. All you can do is show up and give your best to play as well as you can. And whichever team does it better is going to win. That's not something you can necessarily control. You can control individual aspects of your game, your communication, so that needs to be your measures for success so that you attain growth and don't get burnt out. Most players, even if they're, you know, climbing, successful, winning a lot is typically only, you know, 60% win rate or so, right? So you're still losing four out of 10 times. So have goals. So you have barometers for success beyond winning. Obviously on match day, official games, winning is the goal, right? That's the outcome. But for practice in particular, you need to, you need to move past winning and move towards growth. Um, one last thing I want to kind of just emphasize this idea of what's the difference, right? Between practice versus play. You've probably got an idea of where we're going here, but focus and purpose. Uh, those are the major differences between playing a game and practicing a game. Lots of people play rocket league for hours and hours and hours and don't get any better, right? It's just a casual pastime for them, or even some people are trying to get better, but it's not focused and they don't have purposes. They don't have goals. And so they don't actually get any better because they're just putting in hours. And eventually that, that does not work anymore. So mental focus is arguably the single most important 
and most difficult component to improvement. If you can maintain focus on your goals, on your purpose during your sessions, you will get better. I guarantee it. I've seen it every single time I've worked with players. If they're able to do this, they will improve. All right, looking at the next concept, communication. Like I kind of mentioned in the overview, communication is critically important in esports. Good communication is one of the cornerstones of every great team. And bad communication will handicap you and crush you before you even get going. So how you speak in addition to what you say is incredibly important. So let's couple, couple, cover a couple things here. Um, first off, quick question for you guys that I would love you to throw your answers in chat here. What is the purpose of communication? Why do we talk? Why are most esports played with headsets so that teams can communicate with one another? What's the goal? Give you a couple, a couple moments to pass your answers to whoever's behind the keyboard to throw that out there. To create plays and know where your teammates are at. Yeah, good. Good, right? Team dynamics and working together. Good. Anything else? Yeah, those are those are definitely a good start. So base team synergy and accurate rotations. Yeah, good. Make sure we're all on the same page, working well together, doing things correctly. Yeah, basic idea of we're hitting on the, the good themes here, right? These are kind of the, the three primary goals of communication in esports. Um, building player confidence. Um, and I don't necessarily mean like, oh, hey, man, you, you look really good today. Like you, you're playing really well, right? Not, not in an overt compliment sense of confidence, but when your team is communicating, it gives you this sense of confidence because it's like, all right, we know what's going on. We're working together. We're feeling good. And it just builds your, your confidence and helps you play more smoothly, right? You know, hey, we're all focused. We're all engaged right now. And then two and three, right? Kind of these are things that you, you have all touched on providing information that helps aid in your decision-making and understanding the status of the game, what's happening right now that I can't see, or I might not know. So these are the three purposes of communication. How do we accomplish those purposes? Um, I'm going to touch on just big, broad things here, a couple do's and, and some don'ts. And we could probably do a whole series of clinics on communication in esports, but if you don't have just these fundamental things down, it doesn't matter. So what should you say? What do you need to communicate? Number one, relevant information, right? Things your teammates need to know. And that varies game to game, right? In Overwatch, different than in Rocket League, but anything that they need to know, right? Positions of any team, demo, ball position, whatever it is, rotation position, and then encourage one another. And here, encouragement, I do mean overt compliment. Like, hey, way to go, nice job, super great goal, epic save, whatever. Like, use communication as a tool to aid in your gameplay and decision-making and to lift one another up. And probably more importantly than the do's is the don't. Because if you don't do the don't, it doesn't matter because you don't have time to do any of the do's. So what should you not be saying? The very broad category, anything that isn't helpful, anything that is not immediately relevant or useful to your team in the current moment needs to be left unsaid. So many teams, so many players, get so distracted and frustrated and waste one another's time and cut out any room for good communication by filling up the communication with, you know, with reactions to missed goals or missed shots with um, complaints about game mechanics, you know, even, even seemingly helpful things like mid game coaching while it can come from a position or, or a goal of, of constructive or positivity it's not the proper time and place if you're trying to do that mid game while the clock is running, right? Save that for between games where you have time to actually have a good discussion and conversation, but anything that's not immediately relevant to this moment in time needs to be left unsaid. If you can, if you can work this out, you will start to fill that space with things that are useful. Um, okay. Any questions so far? That's, you know, that's communication. 
Um, and that's kind of some of the basic nutshells as far as um, what we wanted to cover before getting to Rocket League specific things. Any questions on practice habits, um, goal setting, communication before we move on? And I'll give a, a minute or two here to throw things out and type things up and then we'll keep going. Nothing so far. All right. If you have questions as we keep going, go ahead and just throw them in the chat. Um, we will do a larger time for, for questions and answers at the end. Um, so if you, if you have questions, be thinking of them, jot them down as we go, or even just throw them in the chat as we go. We'll hit them all up at the end. Um, so I'm going to throw things over to Coach Fish here, and he's going to talk a bit about some of the Rocket League particulars. So Fish, if you are set, let me know if you're able to share your screen or not. I think you should awesome. be. Able. I think, oh, no, I cannot share my screen. Okay, then I will make you, um, if I make you co-host, that might let you do it. I think that should. Yep, okay, awesome. Perfect. All right, so yeah, I am Coach Fish, as uh, Coach Prescott mentioned earlier. Um, right now, I have this past semester, have been the volunteer coach at Northwestern, but I will uh, be starting in January as the director of esports over at Wartburg College. So yeah, if you're interested, we'll be starting that program from the ground up. So feel free to get in contact with me, um, get in contact with Cole too. He can also put you in contact with me. Um, so yeah, why maybe you should listen to me about Rocket League. I was uh, on the team for the years we were club sport and the a year as a varsity sport as team captain, um, coach Rocket League. I do a lot of community coaching, a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. Um, I'm currently, I've been ranked in grand champ for like the past like five seasons. Um, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this game and explaining to people how to get better. And it is one of my biggest passions. So, yeah, let's get into this. How to win at Rocket League. Um, and I, I think in Rocket League, there are definitely two ways to separate skill. There's the skill in mechanics and then there's skill in game sense and kind of like a Rocket League IQ. Um so the first thing that we'll talk about is mechanics and what, what are mechanics, anything that involves control of your car, um, anything else will be game sense. So control your car. That's shooting. It's a lot of contact with the ball recoveries, um, you know, your aerials, your dribbling, if you want to, and then there's more advanced mechanics like flip resets and ceiling shots and just overall speed of play. Um, all these things are examples of mechanics um so how do you practice mechanics how do you get better at controlling your car and and, and being at one uh with your your rocket league car um the the key is to focus on one thing at a time now coach prescott talked about this uh for a while um in yeah having that one main focus that you're going to have before you even start playing i think in rocket league specifically you want to have one mechanic focus one and one game sense focus um goal for every play session sometimes that can even be too much sometimes you just want one mechanic or just one game sense uh, but i would definitely recommend never going above that you want to play intentionally um so for example if you want to get way better at fast aerials you are going to tell yourself in the beginning of every game every time there is a goal scored and there's a lull in the gameplay every moment you have you're going to be repeating in your head okay fast aerials i'm going for fast aerials i'm trying to go as fast as i can fast aerials 
um, and you're going to be practicing that. You're going to do drills. Um, you're going to find training packs and you're just going to go for aerials as fast as you can. And that's going to be your one thing. You're only going to be doing that. Um, and it's important when you're doing that to maintain focus that whole time. Uh, it's really easy to just like, I, I do this a lot when, if I'm practicing like air dribbles or just dribbling in general, I'll just like go in free play. I'll just kind of like take the ball up the wall and just like, I don't know do some stuff and be like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm like practicing right now, but that, that is not how effective practice works. You need to like be trying and mentally engaged the whole time. Do not let yourself go on autopilot. Autopilot is the biggest hindrance to skill and to getting better at the game. You need to be focused and purposefully um, playing and getting better at every moment. Um, and the most important thing uh, for getting better at mechanics is to push yourself beyond your current comfort level. I think players all across the board make this mistake where they find that training pack that just fits them so right and they can do it so well. They can hit that air dribble from that wall. They can hit whatever double touch. Um, but, but if you stick with one training pack, you're just going to learn how to hit that specific shot. You're not going to get better at hitting those same situations in game. Um, so you're, you need to push yourself beyond what you're used to. You need to push yourself to play faster. You need to push yourself to do things in more difficult situations. You need to try to be more accurate. If you're practicing shooting, try to put the ball in the top corners. Don't just try to hit it in the net. Um, stuff like this. You have to keep pushing yourself as, as much as you can. Otherwise you're going to get stagnant. Um, so the next area of skill in Rocket League is game sense. So anything that involves decision-making. So your positioning, your rotations, whether or not you're going to challenge, uh, whether you're going to pass or shoot or what you're doing with the ball, uh, boost management is another part of game sense. Because um, good Rocket League players have big brains. If you want to be good at Rocket League, people oftentimes say like, oh, you know, it's all, it's, this game's all about mechanics, you know, and the game sense doesn't matter, but that is like not true at all. I would argue that game sense is much more important than mechanics. I think people in the community, like if, oh, I can hit this flipper set and it's like, okay, cool. But like, you're still like bad at the game. Um, I think game sense is so much more important. Um, yeah, so a, a big thing I want to talk about in, in regard to game sense specifically, is rotations versus positioning. Now, rotations are so good when you first start off. The, the example picture is kind of that left picture there. Um, rotations are, you know, you go, the next person goes, and the third person goes. And you kind of like take turns. And while that is like a very fundamental thing of Rocket League and still useful at all levels, it, it's very structured and can, can kind of be holding you back sometimes, can be very limiting if you only think of like, whose turn is it to go? When I'm coaching people or especially if I'm playing with friends who are lower ranked than me, they'll often ask, oh, why did you go for that? Wasn't it my turn? And, and the idea of taking turns is where that becomes very harmful. I think it is so much better. If you want to get better at Rocket League, you need to think about positioning in general um, rather than only rotations. Um, so to go more into yeah, what rotations are, it's very turn-based, very structured. Um, it, you, you know, you want to like rotate back posts is a very fundamental thing that is good. Ro rotating is good. It's not a bad thing. Uh, but as you get better at the game, you'll establish these rules and then you can learn when to break them. So you guys probably uh, have seen plenty of videos on YouTube. Every Rocket League YouTuber ever has a video about how to rotate Rocket League. But I would argue what is even more important is to start thinking about positioning when you're thinking about where your car should be on the field. If, if two people are about to hit the ball at the same time, a challenge is about to happen 50, 50 and the ball, you need to think where could the ball go off of this 50, 50 could it, it could pop up in the air. It could go to the left of the wall. It could go to the right to open field. Where could the ball possibly go from the speed at which these players are hitting the ball and from like the angles that they're hitting the ball, where could it go? And so you're imagining all your options. And then after that, you're thinking, okay, where are my teammates already covering? Usually you'll have one teammate on the ball and you'll have another teammate covering the options and then you're covering the other options. So if your teammate is already pushed up field, ready for the ball to go forward or for it to go out into open field, 
maybe you should be further back. If your teammate's covering kind of that left side, maybe you should cover right side. What you need to look at what your teammates are covering so you're not covering the same thing. Um, and then once you realize what your teammate is covering uh, and you see what other options there are for you to cover, odds are you can't cover everything, right? So which ones do you choose? You wanna cover as many as possible, but first and foremost, you wanna cover the most threatening option. And nine times out of 10, that is the net. If the net is open and that ball could get popped over your teammate's head and you're too far pushed up and nobody's covering the net, it's a free goal for them. Never want to allow free goals. Always cover that net. That is almost always the most threatening option. Um, if your teammate's covering net though, then you're fine to cover other options and so on. So always think about positioning and option coverage. Where could this ball go? Where do my opponents want to put the ball? How can I best cover that and work with my teammates to cover those options? I think that'll that'll get you a lot of mileage in terms and, and combine that with rotations as well. You still need to rotate, go back post and and kind of let your, your teammates go in as you go in and et cetera. Uh, but yeah, focus on that positioning. Um, another thing I want to talk about in regards to getting better at Rocket League is how to review replays. Um, I think that that is an extremely overlooked part of Rocket League. The average player is just going to continue playing games and playing games. Maybe you might spend some time in free play or workshop maps or something, but you need to watch your replays if you want to find where your mistakes are. Um, and it can seem a little like counterproductive, like, well, how am I going to watch my own replays? and see my mistakes, but you will be so surprised how many mistakes you make. The The problem is you can't watch a replay right after you play the game. You need to start with fresh eyes to watch that replay. If you immediately finish the game and then go into the replay and watch it again, you're just gonna watch the replay and be like, yep, all that just happened because you're still like emotionally invested. You still are in the same mindset. You would make the same decisions again. But if you just wait 24 hours or maybe even a week and watch the replay later, you will have learned some stuff. You might just be have a clearer head. You might not be as frustrated with that loss or as excited and attached to a win. Um, you'll have much more fresh eyes and you'll be able to see um, the decisions that you made as more objective and see what you did right or wrong. Um, and another way to help that is to have one of your teammates review with you. I think uh, that is extremely helpful because sometimes you don't realize the mistakes that you're making because that's why you made them in the first place. Uh, so if you have a teammate, look at your re re your replay review uh, with you and they can help point out some other mistakes you made. And that could be extremely helpful. And you can communicate, especially since you guys are on a team, you communicate, oh, oftentimes I thought you would do this when I did that. And that way uh, you can kind of talk about some bigger picture stuff. And when you are looking at the replay, analyze every goal that happens. I mean, sometimes you'll notice that you're out of position at times, but more specifically, every time a goal is scored, whether you're on defense or you're on offense, look at why that goal happened. Because at the end of the day, you win the game of Rocket League by scoring more goals than the other person. Um, so on, if you're on defense and you get scored on, it's easy to blame teammates. Do not blame teammates. Odds are you had something to do with that goal. You might think, oh, well, my teammate just like missed that save and that's what happened. You like maybe 0.01% of the time. Yeah. Your teammate just misses the ball and that's why it gets scored on. But almost every time the goal happened because of three or four ball touches before that, maybe you had a really bad 50 in midfield that gave possession to the other team and they were able to make a really good pass that allowed them to score a goal rather than just looking at the shot same thing on offense see why you are scoring so you can recreate that if you're scoring because you're doing a really good job at passing off the backboard or maybe you're cutting it infield early rather than taking all the way to the opposing team's corner um, that can be really helpful of seeing why those things are happening and how to recreate them uh, when you're doing all those things look for patterns if you notice ways that you're getting scored on all the time or ways that you're scoring all the time learn from those. If you notice that you're out of position every time you challenge a ball that you're too far pushed up on, maybe you just need to turn around and rotate out. Like notice these patterns that you're continually doing and then focus on fixing them uh, immediately after that. Um, and yes, yeah, so if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, you can throw them in the chat. I think oh, that is... Um, all that I have for that presentation. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Anything Rocket League related, um, anything esports related, collegiate esports related. Um, yeah, throw it in the chat. I'd 
would love to talk about it. Sam Cole Prescott, I'm sure would be able to answer a lot of those for you as well. Yep. As far as content goes, that was, that's everything we wanted to cover clinic wise. We wanted to leave a good chunk of time for questions. Uh, we had quite a few in the two clinics so far. So we want to give opportunity for, for players and coaches alike to ask whatever questions they have. So you can start throwing those in the chat, or even if you want to unmute and just ask them on mic, either format is fine. And we'll just keep going um, up until five o'clock or until we run out of questions, whichever comes first. So give you a couple of minutes to start getting those in and throwing those out there. I'm just going to throw that back up there as well. What's the best mentality going into a ranked game or even for esports games? Um, I guess it, it, there's a lot to say about mentality in general. Um, you always want to be confident. I think Rocket League is all about confidence and nobody talks about that enough. You need to believe that you are capable of winning. If you don't think that you're capable of winning, if you think, oh man, this team's going to be way better than us. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. You're going to play really slowly and you're going to hesitate for every challenge. You need to play with confidence. You need to play with speed. Um, and you're going to trust your teammates more when you have that. So I'd say confidence is the number one thing. Um, and I'd say, especially for, for esports games, like, like competitive games that way, uh, ranked games online, like at the end of the day, your rank doesn't matter too much. I'd say use rank as a practice platform. Um, yeah, your mentality should be, what do I want to learn from this and how can I learn best? If I get scored on, how can I learn why I got scored on and not let that happen again? I'd say it's all about learning and improving. If you care about winning and losing and what your rank is, you're just going to have a frustrating time with the game. What else? What is, that's a good question, though. What are, what are some other questions? Best way to practice aerials. Um, yeah, what, like I, I said earlier in the mechanic section, you have to push yourself uh, to go as fast as you can. Now there's there's great training packs, great workshop maps, like uh, the rings map, it, or there's several rings maps. Uh, all those are phenomenal. If you're playing on PC, you have access to those. Uh, if not, just go into any training pack that has aerials and go as fast as you can. You want to be boosting almost the whole way to the ball. Don't let the ball come to you. Always go to the ball. Imagine that you have opponents on the field who are also trying to beat you to that ball and you need to get there as fast as you can. Um, yeah, just practice, practice, practice. Don't do the same training packs every time. Always switch it up. Look for new ones. If you're on PC uh, and you can install Bacchus mod, you can have it... Uh, have a little bit of variance every time. So even if it is the same training pack, it'll alter the trajectory of the ball just slightly. Um, so it'll be a little bit different every time. And that's a good way to practice as well. Um, and then when you're in game, focusing on aerials, sometimes, especially uh, when you're still getting better, there's this like tendency like, okay, I don't want to miss this shot. So I'm going to wait for the ball to get a little bit lower or I'm going to wait a little bit longer till I get a better read on the ball. And then I'll go up and take my shot. I think you have to just push yourself to go as fast as you can, even in game. You can, if, if you end up missing the shot because you're pushing yourself too hard, yeah, that might hurt you in that specific game, but it's going to help you in the long run to getting better. So I think you, yeah, you can't be afraid uh, to push yourself and make mistakes in the moment so you can learn from them later. Oh yeah, that's a, that's another, another great question. Keep them coming. I'll throw out a, a question to Phil while people get them typed up here. Um, well, actually, I'll let you do Hunter's question first, and then I'll, and I'll ask mine. Yeah, sure. Um, speaking of aerials, I've been told I have a habit of just double jumping into an aerial instead of going for a speed aerial. Are speed aerials more worth getting into? 
A hundred percent, yes. They, they're like speed aerials or fast aerials. I think I've I've more commonly heard them referred to. Um, I, for the longest time, I did the same thing. I would just double jump and then go for an aerial. The 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 better way to do it is if you just YouTube fast aerial, it'll be a lot. You'll have a lot of really good tutorials on there that'll have better visuals and everything. Um, but you want to jump one time and then tilt your car back a little bit and then do a normal jump for your second jump. That tilting your car back will convert your forward momentum into vertical momentum and you'll get higher way quicker. And it might feel really awkward. You might accidentally backflip a lot um, when you're first starting to learn how to do them, but you'll get a lot faster, you'll get a lot better and it'll improve in the long run. And I think that's another one of those things that is easy to just not push yourself out of your comfort zone, but you have to, if you want to get better for the longest time, I was like, well, I don't want to accidentally backflip when I'm going for this shot in game. So I would just do the double jump. Um, and that hurt me for in the long run. I wish I would have just learned how to play a little bit faster sooner and I would have got better a lot faster. So I would definitely recommend looking up a tutorial and, uh, getting into those, um, are speed flip kickoffs worth looking into personally. I don't think speed flip kickoffs are super good. Um, other coaches might disagree. Um, I think just learning how to speed flip in general is a good way to get around the map, but going for speed flip kickoff, unless it's like ones, I think it's good in ones, but in normal threes, like what uh, most competitions would be in. Um, I think they're, they're not the best because they use all your boosts and then you don't have a whole lot of boost to get anything else. The most important thing in kickoffs is to get to the ball in a way that's not going to lose the kickoff completely, unless you're losing it purposely to your teammates um, in a way that leaves you with the most boost. So you can beat your opponent to like the side boosts. Um, so what I do for almost all my kickoffs is just a simple front flip and then flip into the ball and save as much boost as possible. When you do that, you can finish the whole kickoff with about eight boosts left, which can actually be huge compared to a speed kickoff or, um, or a wave dash kickoff that'll use all your boosts. I don't think those are near as good, uh, for comms specifically in like an esports setting. What are comms that should be used? Like obviously first and second man, but what else could be useful? That is a fantastic question because um, that was something that our team, when I was a player, struggled with for a long time. We didn't know what to talk about. Um, I think talking about when you are back post, if so that way the person who is going for the ball can feel confident. So like saying I'm back post, if you're going to pass, say when you're passing um, or if you're like downfield, say you're downfield, every time you go for the ball, you should say like, oh, I'm up or I'm going. Um, those are all really important things. Um, and just in general, it can be hard to communicate at first when you're getting better at the game. If you don't have a plan of what you're doing, if you're just hitting the ball to hit the ball, obviously you can't communicate that to your teammate of what your plan is if you don't have a plan yourself. So every time you're hitting the ball, you should have a purpose of why you're hitting it to either maintain possession, to shoot, to send it downfield, to pass it. If you know what you're doing before you hit the ball for yourself, you can say, I'm passing, I'm clearing, I'm catching, whatever you're doing with the ball, you can communicate that better. Um, so I think that's really important. I think in other games like Overwatch, where you have like six people on a team at one time, you have to be very clear with your communication because you can clutter, um, how many people are talking at one time, but in Rocket League, where there's only three people, um, I think that you can say basically everything you're doing and it'll, as long as it's useful, don't just talk about random stuff. Um, but wherever you're positioned on the field, all information is good information until you realize that you're having too many people talking, then you can cut it back. But I'd say for the most part, teams don't talk enough. So most talk about, hey, I'm on your right, I'm on your left, I'm going for the ball, I'm behind you, you can go, stuff like that. I do really want to emphasize that last piece that Coach Rich said is that most teams err on the side of not enough communication um, or of communicating the wrong thing. So yeah, don't don't be afraid. If you're saying too much, unless you guys really think you're running over one another's uh, communication. Um, I'll throw out a question for you, Fish, to fill some space here while people get more in. But um, in talking about, you know, reviewing replays, talk a little more about that process in terms of um, how long, how, how long you should you review replays in a single session? How many different games should you look at? What do you go about structuring that that session? 
Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I've heard different schools of thought on this. Some people will say, I've seen one person say that you should play about three to five games and then do a replay review of one of those five games. Personally, I think you're still a little too attached to those games. I think it's too soon. Um, another school of thought that I've heard is to start every like play session. If you're going to be like playing or practicing uh, for an hour or two, start with one or two replays and then get into the game. Um, how long you should re do one replay for? Um, it depends. I think it, it, it depends what your goal of it is. If you're looking at your own replay just by yourself, I think you want to generally make those a little bit quicker and just look for patterns. So maybe you can go through a few games of your own stuff to look for patterns and mistakes that you've made and analyze why goals are being scored there. Um, if you have a teammate or a coach or um, anybody who's maybe like a little bit higher rank than you that can look over your replay, I think it'd be really good then to take almost like 30 minutes looking at one replay so that you can dive into every single decision and every possible mistake uh, that has been made and really nitpick there. So yeah, if, if you're having someone who's better than you review your replay, they should be longer. If you're looking at your own replays, I think you can go a little bit faster and do more replays to kind of look for patterns. Uh, but I'd say if you really want to get better, probably at least one replay per play session. Um, got another question. Is there a way to apply twos game sense to threes? I feel very confident playing twos, but then threes, I feel out of place and it's cause for my team to lose sometimes. Any ideas on what I could improve for that? I play more aggressive in twos. And that, that's really interesting. I'm mostly a threes player, so I have to adjust to when I play twos. And what I've realized is that in threes, you can be more aggressive because you usually have an extra teammate to cover the net for you. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that you say that you play more aggressive in twos. I think overall though, it, that's why rotation can be uh, damaging as well, because the rotation in twos and threes will be significantly different. But if you just look at where you should have your car positioned in sense of like option coverage, um, I think that will definitely uh, apply to both twos and threes. If your teammate is going for the ball and you see that your teammates like up in the air in twos and you see that uh, your teammates taking a shot, it's like, well, I'm going to be further back because I know I'm the only other player on the field. So if they get dunked or get their shot blocked or something, if I'm pushed too far up, then the opponents are going to have a free goal. So I know that it's my job to cover net, but in threes, you can kind of be pushed up a little bit further waiting for a quick pass because you know that you'll have a third teammate covering net for you. But the idea of where could the ball go? Um, what are my teammates covering? What is the most threatening option that the opponents have of where the ball could go and cover that threatening option? I think um, that same idea applies to both twos and threes. Uh, I want to piggyback on that one. And the other thing, so it's even in your question, you feel very confident playing twos, but then threes, you feel out of place. Um, honestly, to like just focus on the improvement, don't don't play scared. Like a lot of people will just throw themselves off by being hesitant because they think, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Just go for it. Do whatever you think is, is the best decision and then figure out if, okay, was that the right move or not in your replay reviews? Um, and then the other thing I want to touch on that is, you know, we had... Uh, a freshman for us this year who was mostly a two twos player came into it, mostly freestyler, mostly playing ones and twos. Didn't have a lot of threes experience, um, very mechanically skilled, but game sense was, uh, was weak in threes. Right. But end of the semester, right. Give him three months of, of practice and this plan just as well as his two teammates who were both higher ranked than him at the start of the year. Right. He came in as, you know, champ three, got a guy's GC2, got a guy's SSL, and he really picked up speed and it was a very, you know, strong member of the team by the end of the semester. So give yourself grace, give yourself some time, as long as you practice effectively and figure out what mistakes you're making, you'll, you'll definitely get there. So don't, don't sweat that for too much. All right. We've got time for a couple more here. If you've got any more. We'll give a, a minute or two for those to get tossed in. A 
Fish, one other question I'll throw out there for you is um, for, you know, we, we've talked a lot about a lot of stuff for, for maybe more beginner players or moderate level players. What do you feel like are some of the traps that high level players run into, right? They've, they've practiced for a long time. Uh, they've improved to a high degree and maybe they feel a little bit stuck or are trying to figure out what's the next step for them. What are some things that higher ranked players need to keep in mind and look out for? Yeah, I think at, at the top level, the game can get, it, it can feel like the game can get a little repetitive and it feels like the same things are happening, the same situations. And it, it feels like uh, it can, it can be tough to improve further. It feels like you've learned everything there is to learn. Um, but just realizing that, that like, isn't true i think it'd be really helpful to to find like maybe join some discords or even watching pro gameplay to realize oh my gosh they are so much better than me there is a lot left to learn in this game uh, realizing the 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 gap you have to to continue growing i think is the most important thing as well as still being in love with the game of rocket league if you are only playing to get better if you're only playing to win you're going to not enjoy your time playing and you're not going to want to get better but if you remember how fun it is to continue playing this game and the and and to acknowledge the growth that you have made since you first started playing this game it's going to be so much more satisfying and feel so much more fun and you're just going to love the game so much more you're going to enjoy the time you spend with it and you're going to want to get better even faster um, so i'd say recognizing how much room you have to grow and and yeah being in love with the game is really important uh, we got another question here. Is there a way to work around someone who is a higher rank than you? Um, so this is just something that's interesting about esports in general, um, because when you play like ranked by yourself, it, you purposely the game purposely puts you with everybody who's like your same skill level, right? Uh, but when you're on a team setting, sometimes you're going to have a teammate who's way higher ranked than you are, a, or lower ranked, um, and that's just like much different from playing ranked on your own um so how can you work around someone who is higher rank than you um you still have to trust each other i think and you have to listen to i would say listen to their advice if they know more about the game um ask them questions um accept their criticism well uh, ask them to give you tips in any way that they can um, and so when you're in the middle of a game um Try not to cut each other off. If one player is a much faster than the other, it can be really tempting for that fast player to just go for everything 24 seven, to never pass, to kind of just try to carry their team by themselves. Um, but that doesn't always work. I think you'll run into issues. Rocket League is definitely a team game. Um, so try to try to still work together at a team, still try to pass, don't cut each other off. Um, and if you notice a mistake in your teammates gameplay or especially if your teammate is the higher ranked one and they notice a mistake in your gameplay. Um, yeah. Ask, be open to their help and advice. The other thing I would throw on top of that is if you, right, you talked a bit about working around a higher teammates. If you are that higher teammate, create a, a safe environment for your lower ranked teammates that they can play confidently um, so that they don't feel like they have to play scared. Cause a lot of times, you know, if, if you're on the team and you are not the highest ranked person, you feel a lot of that pressure, that anxiety to perform. Um, and you're afraid to make stakes since you'll play slow, you'll hesitate and play maybe worse even than you are. So make sure you're creating an environment that is safe for mistakes. Like, Hey, mistakes are going to happen. Recognize too, that you being a better player, you know, are still going to make mistakes. They're going to be different mistakes. They may be higher level or more complex mistakes, but you're still going to make them. Um, so be, be humble in that offer constructive criticism and feedback in a helpful way. Um, definitely use the, the skills and knowledge you've got to build up your teammates, but make sure you're, you're encouraging them that and well as well and staying humble as you do that. Um, but yeah, as, as Fish mentioned, that's a really uh, very common dynamic in, in esports teams at the high school and collegiate level is not everyone is the same rank. Um, and so you have to figure out how do we work through those, those dynamics. All right, I think we will probably call it there. Um, so I'll move into just wrap up kind of, hey, what's What's next? Where do you go from here? Right. You've got this information. Um, what do you, what do you take from this? Uh, two things that I, that I want to hit home on. Um, 
You don't get bogged down in the micro. Focus on the big picture, um, both in Overwatch and in Rocket League. You know, like Fish mentioned, a lot of people get caught up in, in focusing on mechanics. Um, for a lot of players, you're likely to get more mileage out of the big picture, out of your game sense, rotation, and positioning. So focus on big concepts first, work your way down to the little things. Um, and then discuss next steps, you know, get together with your teams, your coaches, the start of your next practice to sit down, take five to 10 minutes to have a focused conversation about, Hey, what did we learn? What were the most important concepts for our team in particular? What can we take away from this? Set those goals, figure out, Hey, where do we go from here? Create, you know, make that big list. Figure out, all right, these are the 10 things we learned that we think we could be working on. Which of these is most important and just start chugging through that list. And you'll, you'll get a lot of, a lot of mileage out of that. And then again, uh, contact me. We are recruiting for rocket league. Um, we, we have a lot of slots that we're looking to fill. We have our one roster right now, but we are looking to expand to two or potentially even three rosters. Um, we have a great program here, a lot of opportunity, not just scholarship, but in competition academically, Northwestern is exceptionally strong. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, reach out either via your coaches or submit that recruit form there. And I'll be sure to follow up and connect with you. Otherwise, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Have a great rest of your evenings. And we'll be looking forward to following your seasons as things go. If you ever have any questions, you can always pass those through your coaches to us as well, whether it's related to the clinic or anything else like that. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, guys. Coach Fish, thanks for, thanks for joining us here. Appreciate your insight and experience on that as well.